my name is Zoe and my handle is Ms. Manga because this is a channel that's mostly going to be about manga, <laughs> go figure. I've collected and read and loved manga for probably like close to 20 years or so now, um, most of my life and I just really have a passion for it and I like sharing the manga I'm reading or collecting with people. Um, I also have an Instagram by the way, all things underscore manga anime. I'll put it in the link below if you want to follow me on there where I am active on again, off again. <laughs> but I like um, doing these hauls or sharing things in my stories or reels and I just got to thinking, could I do a YouTube video with this stuff? So my first one, my first YouTube video is going to be just a relaxed um, haul, Christmas haul to be exact. And yeah, I'm just gonna share with you all the manga books I got from friends and family this holiday season. And uh, they were quite generous with me. I'm very thankful. <laughs> Sorry, that's my cat. <laughs> She's in the closet too. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoy watching and we'll get started. I'm gonna go for it. So first thing I got, my lovely friend got me, Chainsaw Man. I got the first three volumes. So I had already read volume one way back in like August 2021 when I visited some friends and they had volume one. So I read it and I wasn't immediately, immediately, I wasn't immediately like, oh my god, I have to go out and buy all of it. But I was intrigued. So I'm definitely going to reread volume one and then read two and three and see how I feel. I usually give a series two volumes or three volumes just, you know, to feel it out. But yeah, it's, um, it's way more of a mature Shonen Jump title, if you want to say that. There's a lot of gore. There's a lot of, um, I want to touch some boobs. <laughs> That's the main character's motivation right there. It's classy. But um, yeah, I feel like it will have a lot more to it as it goes on. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe I'm giving it more credit. But I've heard a lot of good things. A lot of people love it. So definitely excited to check out more of it. Another friend got me those not so sweet boys, which is obviously going to be a shoujo type romance series set in high school um where a cute probably smart girl <laughs> has to deal with the three you know delinquent type boys and yeah so I haven't read it yet but it's you know I'm excited to check it out it's been on my list for a while um I just haven't bought it and I personally have gotten farther away from shoujo titles. I think it's partially because like the whole school romance doesn't really apply to me and hasn't for quite some time. And I find it all a bit cliche, drawn out sometimes. But there's still ones that I love, so I'm not making any judgments. I could absolutely love the crap out of this one. <laughs> Next up, I got Freerin, 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 <laughs> oh my gosh, tongue tied already, Beyond Journey's End, and this one is a like, almost anti-isekai fantasy type, but it starts at the end of the quest and kind of works its way up. I've heard the, it's pretty like sad, deals with like, loss and time because um the main character is an immortal elf and all the other people in her party not so immortal <laughs> so I'm yeah like if I connect with the characters this is for sure gonna make me cry like I already know I easily cry I'm an emotional person I can admit that <laughs> it's fine Next up, we have um, one of my favorite tropey type stories currently. 
<laughs> and that is the reincarnated villainous trope. So this one is the typical one, or a lot of them are, is um, reincarnated um, as a villainous. So yeah, the abandoned empress is about um, starts as a girl in college playing an Otome game on her phone and then she wakes up uh, after falling asleep she wakes up as the villainous in the Otome game she was playing and now she has to figure out how not to be killed because this girl keeps being killed by family and everyone and <laughs> yeah so I don't know why I'm such a sucker such a sucker for this like I I don't know. I don't know what it is. They're all kind of similar. I'm not gonna lie. They're not the best thing ever. They're probably not like the most standout of the manga I received. But I straight up read volume one and volume two <laughs> and volume three that I got on Christmas. I read them that day on Christmas because <laughs> that's how freaking uh, much of a mess I am that I went right to these. I don't know what it is. The pull is strong. And uh, they're just fun. You know, it's full color. It's fun. It's lighthearted. I mean, trying to avoid death isn't exactly lighthearted, but you know, it's like, it's not an intense manga, really. It's just, yeah. It's, but yeah. So I'm really enjoying it. Um, I do not trust the green haired boy, by the way. I've not finished. I've not. I've resisted the urge to go online and read the rest of it because, yeah, but, um, this is the last volume that's currently out, but I don't trust the green haired boy, and I personally don't like any of the boys in her, like, anti-hero, but, like, I, I don't know, like, usually I think all the boys are cute or, like, endearing, the red haired boy is probably the best one, and it's not saying a lot, <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's definitely different because I'm like, all these boys are kind of crap. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> if you like any of them, that's fine. But, um, yeah. Anyway, so the next up is a Fruits Basket Collector's Edition Volume 11. This is the second to the last volume of Fruits Basket. And, um, I, I have, and I do, I have already collected Fruits Basket <laughs> the Tokyo Bomb editions. It was my first manga series, actually. Um, so, yeah, and I, I have no excuse except to say that th these are beautiful editions, and, and, and I wanted to collect them, too. I have a problem. <laughs> Instead of getting new manga, I get just a reprint of something I already own. <laughs> but I... I adore Fruits Basket. I have read it so many times. I read it like every couple of years. It's one of my favorite shoujo fantasy type series. So yeah, <laughs> definitely recommend it. It's so good. But yeah, I don't, I don't need to collect this, but it's okay because I'm only one away from finishing it. So. Okay. Then, all right, next up is another one I didn't need to collect. Technically, I own the Dark Horse smaller paperback omnibuses of Chobits, or Chobits, however you want to say it. Um, but these are so much prettier. I mean, my gosh, hardcover with color, with big, bigger pages, better quality pages. <laughs> I have problems. But I do usually ask for these type of like repeat buys as presents because I don't want to spend my own money on something I technically already own, but I want the prettier version. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, this one is a bit more male skewing uh, um, demographic than Clamp's usual work, usually a bit more um, from the female perspective, a bit more of like a badass girl vibes, I guess, or coming of age girl vibes but um this one is very much more like a <laughs> cute sci-fi um a little bit of a love story from a male perspective so it's a little bit more etchy um and yeah but she she is so adorable you gotta read it for chi <laughs> definitely still recommend i love clamp's work i love their art style so yeah and then 
soul eaters so this isn't one i actually collected it's the paperbacks um i watched the anime and i bought the anime but i never actually owned or read the manga so i've been slowly asking for these for presents the uh perfect editions i don't love the artwork on the cover to be quite honest with you like this one this is a miss for me i don't like black star as it is and his face is weird <laughs> have the next one volume four and she's looking cute she's fine it's just like some of the art is not as good to me as the paperback ones and it also bugs me that they did one and a half volumes why one and a half why not just do two two volumes per omnibus that's the usual but they they're like no we're gonna be different we're gonna do one and a half Okay, sorry for the glare, by the way. I'm in my closet because this has the best lighting. <laughs> I live in like an old house with like not great amount of lighting and my closet has a vanity mirror with lights and then my overhead lights. So that's just where I'm filming for now. Um, as you can see, I also doesn't have any manga. It does have books. I have a lot of books as well as manga. I'm, I'm just an all around bookworm <laughs> and I have been all of my life. <laughs> You can also see my clothes and stuff, so I apologize for that. Next up, we have a Junji Ito, Fragments of Horror. This one had been on my list for forever. It's been like one of the oldest Junji Itos that have been printed that I didn't have. Because I get like almost, like, I think I'm missing two now. Two of his newer ones, or maybe three of his newer like short story collection ones. Um, but yeah, I, I, I try and collect everything Junji Ito. I love his style. I love the weird wacky way his mind works. Yeah, it just, I, it, it, don't read him if you don't like horror or grotesque imagery. Yeah, but otherwise, really good. M most of his reads are very interesting, thought-provoking, and like just visually amazing. So yeah, I definitely recommend. <laughs> so we've gotten to the point where you can see the books on the shelf. So I'm going to take a minute <laughs> so next up are two volumes that another friend of mine gave me which i'm super excited about first is witches the complete collection and this is supposed to be like interwining inter interweaving <laughs> interweaving interlocking uh short stories about witchcraft tales of witchcraft and i love witches, spooky, scary, skeletons, <laughs> all that jazz. So I'm very intrigued and excited about this one. The only problem I foresee is that I will want to read it during spooky season and spooky season is months and months away. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see when I read this. So next, they got me Hayao Miyazaki's Shuna's Journey. So I haven't read it yet. But the art already, I like flipped through, art is so beautiful. It's Hayao Miyazaki after all. I mean, like any any page you flip to, it's going to be beautiful like this one. Just randomly, like there was no marker in there. I just randomly picked a page and it was beautiful. Um, but yeah, you know, everyone knows the movies. But the manga he writes is actually really good as well. I read all of Nausicaa and it was so good. So good. Definitely recommend uh, it's like two omnibus, like really thick omnibuses, but it's so beautiful. The art's amazing. It's a really great story. It really expands on what you see in the like hour and a half, two hours of the movie Nausicaa. So yeah, <laughs> I'm really, really excited for that. And then I got from my parents, The Poe Clan, volume two. So I love Moto Hagyo. I hope I didn't butcher completely <laughs> the mangaka's name, but um, I discovered them when I read um, A Drunken Dream, which is a collection of short stories, and then I read another, and another, and yeah. So now I have, I think this is the, I believe this is the final, yeah, concluding volume. It's the final volume of Poe Clan, which is about like vampires and murders and mysteries and I am so excited for this one so yeah if you don't love um the older art style because this is an older mangaka it's an older art style 
I understand. I do understand. But you should still give it a chance because she's an amazing storyteller. They're an amazing storyteller. And I just, if you can like overlook it and just get into the story, I think you'll immediately be like, yes, this is worth it. <laughs> So, yeah, and definitely like character driven stories if you like character driven stories. They're really good, really good. And oh my god, that was so heavy <laughs> holding that up with one hand. It's hefty. All right, next up we have some Black Butler. So, I have um, not wanted to buy this series to be honest because it's it's just taken forever, you know. It, I mean, it was. It's been going on for for quite a long time, and I don't know when it's gonna wrap up. But I finally asked for some random, like beginning volumes, um, and I just got whatever you know they had in the store when <laughs> my parents went to buy it. And yeah, and I also had three from the um, Atlantis arc. I think that's what it's called when the Undertaker shows up. And that's what got me into being like, fine, I'll collect the series. But I just, I can't deal with another really slow release. I already have D. Grey Man that I love so much, but each volume, it's like, takes forever. And I haven't even been into it as long as some people have probably been dying of waiting for each volume's release. I can't even imagine. I just, slow releases are so painful, but I mean, they're better than hiatuses. <sighs> Looking at you, Nana. It's so good, but it's been on hiatus for forever. I don't know if we'll ever get an end, and it hurts, but, you know, that happens. Anyway, so those are my random volumes of Black Butler. I like uh, hot guys in my story, <laughs> and some mystery, and some fighting, and yeah, so it's overall just a uh, more... Yeah, similar to D. Gray Man, um, but uh, more on the shoujo spectrum than the shounen spectrum. Uh, last single volume I got uh, is actually a novel, but I'm going to share it anyway, because it's boyfriend material. And I really, really like this one. I took it out of my library, and I read it, and I fell in love. And yeah, it's just about these two boys in England who they don't really like each other and there's a little bit of an enemy of the lovers vibe and also it's kind of an arranged relationship vibe um because they both are kind of getting something out of the arrangement so they decide to like date and it's just so cute i mean i can see some people not liking it because he the one character is a bit whiny complains a bit but as someone who also can be quite whiny and complains a lot i thought he was well written <laughs> and annoying but charming <laughs> and we should just be more forgiving towards these characters they deserve love too <laughs> i feel like i got personal <laughs> anyway last of our two box sets that i got the one is the second box set of the quintessential quintuplets so I already have the part one first box set and now I have the complete box set. So I started reading this and then when I realized the second box set wasn't coming out until, well now, <laughs> I stopped reading it. But I already have my girl, it's Guy. That's my pick. I love her. I love her funny faces, facial expressions. She's hilarious. And her desire to just eat all the food and like every chapter she's eating something and I love it. Kindred spirit. Except for the fact that she's not studious because I was I was very studious. I was kind of a dork, kind of a nerd. But other than that, totally love Itsuki. She's so adorable. Nino would be my second favorite. So yeah, <laughs> if you have a favorite quintessential quintuplet, let me know in the comments. <laughs> I love learning people's favorites and why like if you have a reason or if you just think they're adorable I get it I think I mean all the girls all five are adorable but yeah oh, I gotta get the last thing is the box set oh so the last 
box set, I got was Princess Jellyfish. Oh, it's so pretty and heavy. So heavy. <laughs> you can't even see me anymore because <laughs> it's so big. But Princess Jellyfish is a really sweet story. Granted, I have not finished it. I read volumes one, two, and three. And then they announced the box set and I was like, hold up, wait a minute, I want the box set. <laughs> it's been years and I finally have it. So now I can complete the story. But I seriously love Ahi... Ahiko? Ahiko? No, Akiko? Oh my god, the, the type on this is terrible. I could not read that. Akiko. I really love Akiko Higashimura. I'm terrible. But I really love the manga's other um, stories. I've read Tokyo Terba Girls. Terba Girls. <laughs> and that one was so good. It was about 30 some year olds, friend group, just um, kind of complaining and striving to find love and connections and also just having an amazing friendship. I'm going to put this down because it's really freaking heavy. <laughs> So I, and then, like I said, I read the first couple of these and I really like it. Same thing. It's like the outcast kind of girl, um, who's living in a, a like, um, it's, not, it's a home, it's apartment. I don't know what they're called, <laughs> but they're like apartments all shared by girls of roughly the same age and they're all a bit of outcasts a bit of what society might think are weird quirky but um they you know they all have friendship with each other and understand each other's quirks and they're all a bit awkward and shy in society but then this adorable and oh my gosh beautiful uh oh beautiful look at him he's so beautiful character, I forget his name by the way, uh, appears and uh, really makes them open up and experience the world outside. And yeah, it's just really, really sweet and charming and funny. And yeah, so I'm excited to so read this. Yeah, that was my Christmas manga, mostly, haul. And if you celebrate Christmas or any other holiday and you got some manga or novels you're super excited about, or just anything, I guess, that made you happy this holiday season, uh, feel free to share in the comments. I will try and, and read them. I don't know how much I will um, respond. I will kind of be just seeing how this goes, how this whole experience goes. But yeah, so um, again, thank you for watching. And my next video, I plan to talk about my top manga reads of 2022 and also about the series that I completed series that I read through in 2022. So those will be my next videos if you would like to subscribe so you get notified when they come up. That would mean a great deal to me. And yeah, hit that thumbs up. Oh my god, I'm cringing inside because I've seen so many YouTubers do that and then I just did it. But yeah, if you like this, like it. I don't know how to do it in a cuter, classier way though. It just is what it is. And uh, thanks again. I hope to see you soon.